There we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Thank you for joining us and um, another conversation about homeschooling that we hope will empower you to, um, to just dive into homeschooling wherever you're at. But um, this month, we're focusing on organization, planning. How do I do that? And how do I get all this stuff together in my home? Because now you've got your kids in your home, you've got your your everything else you do in your home, your work in your home. And um, so we, we want to encourage you this month that this is possible and there are some simple, easy ways to make that happen. Um, so tonight my guest is um, Stephanie Buckwalter and um, she's from the Art of Special Needs Parenting. And she's going to share with us, well, let's see, what's the title of our, our talk tonight is um, Organizing Your Classroom for Success. And um, so, so this is an exciting um, topic because there's a lot of things involved in a homeschool classroom, not just the books and stuff. And so Stephanie's going to hit on a lot of things. Um, I do want to thank Knotgrass um, History for sponsoring this episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We'll hear more about them about halfway through um, our our um, conversation, but um, definitely check them out at knotgrass.com if you don't know anything about them. And um, and thank you all for that are already joining us. If um, if you know another homeschooler that or somebody that's maybe looking at getting started and they're saying, how do I get all this stuff organized? Share this broadcast with them. Send them the link. Um, even if you're not watching live, um, if you're watching the recorded session, definitely share. Um, we're going to be incorporating your comments, your questions throughout this time. So, so definitely put those in the feed. And um, we're... We'd love to make you part of this conversation. That's why we're live. So, so Stephanie, thank you for joining me again. You have been a guest before, and I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> so welcome. Hi, well, thank you, Peggy. Thank you for having me. I look forward to sharing with everyone. Yeah, I look forward to what you have to share. So, um, so we are talking about organization. Now, this is something that I do well with my own self, but I don't organize anything else well. <laughs> my, my husband will say, yeah, you put something somewhere and then you forget what you did with it. <laughs> so I don't know if that's really called organization. That's just called putting it behind a cupboard <laughs> door and, and leaving it there. So um, before we get started, can you tell our audience just a little bit about you and um, just how organization became something that you were passionate about? Well, um, I'm married. I have five children, uh, four boys and one girl. The four boys are all out of high school now, and my uh, daughter is in high school, and she has special needs, and I am homeschooling her. She was in, I started out homeschooling her, and then due to family circumstances, she went into public school for a few years, mm -hmm. and now I'm homeschooling again with her, so I'm really excited about that. Um, awesome. So, I, so I understand if you're if you've been doing virtual school and you're trying to transfer into homeschooling, we mm -hmm. we were in that situation and that's eventually why I pulled her out. So <clears throat> it's all very recent. And <laughs> I homeschooled my other children, one of them all the way through high school. Um, he was a struggling learner. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot about homeschooling special needs through homeschooling him. And then the other ones, one boy through eighth grade, one through fifth grade. And <laughs> we... Um, and I have a grandbaby with another one on the way and I babysit. Wow. So we do homeschooling and babysitting. So even though I, my four boys are graduated, we're back to having homeschool with toddlers, with the little. Oh, yes. So, that's, that's a challenge in itself. <laughs> yeah. so, so we're back in that mode, but I, I just, I love homeschooling. So it's not a burden at all. Awesome. Well, that's Oh, great. and then about organizing. That's right. You asked me another question. Yes. Um, so why am I passionate about organizing? I am not really an organized person. And I read, I have books and books and books and books on organization. <laughs> I finally came up with my own system called Kamikaze Cleaning because what happened was, so I had the four boys and everything was going along. Mm -hmm. And then I had my daughter and she had massive problems and, you know, all the doctor's appointments and all that right, stuff. Exactly. And so I ended up neglecting my household for 10 years. Mm. <laughs> it's still not 100% ready. But so I developed a system for at least getting recovering the household and all mm, that stuff. And important. through that, I've learned a lot about just organizing in general, general principles, and then adding special needs daughter. Mm -hmm. There's even more organizational stuff that goes with that. So right. it's been, 
it's been a journey. It's been a challenge, but I really do like organizing. That's awesome. Well, I think um, our audience will benefit from from your experience and oftentimes our experience of, you know, saying, I know where you're at <laughs> and my house has been where what yours looks like, um, that it's encouraging to say that this what I'm going to, you know, what you're going to share really works. It isn't just um, somebody who comes in and hasn't had four boys. That's that's craziness in itself with the many messes that follow. So I just have two boys and I know what that that's like. So yeah. uh, so when setting priorities for organization and a successful homeschool environment, what should be at the top of the list and why? The top of the list is you have to organize yourself because mm. if you're not organized, your homeschool won't be organized. Now, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you're not the super organized type. So that's not what I mean. <laughs> if you are, some of what I say may make you cringe on how I do organization versus someone who's naturally or really organized. Mm. Um, but really, you have to be able to plan and you can plan any way you want. You can plan in detail, which as if you have a special needs child, you probably already know that doesn't work because right. there are up they days, down plans. days, <laughs> the development will be behind. So you're not mm-hmm. following anybody's scope and sequence. You're winging it. And that's right. fine. That's, mm-hmm. but it still requires some planning, yeah. uh, at least if nothing else, 24 hours in advance. Right. And, <laughs> and a pencil. <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> and then um, another way to organize yourself is through prayer. You yes. really can't do this alone. And you just have to pray through some days. I did that today. As a matter of fact, I was telling Peggy before we came on <laughs> that this was my daughter had a whole morning meltdown because mm-hmm. her iPad wasn't charged. Wow. And yeah. she can't function without it. She's nonverbal. And so she relies mm-hmm. on it to speak. And right. so it's a part of her. Mm-hmm. And it was a nightmare. But anyway, so oh. you just can't plan for days like that. So right. we, did school after the iPad was charged. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pray through that. And after she got her iPad back, she went outside on a swing and I went to sleep for an hour because that's how traumatized I was from it. (laughs) So um, a lot of prayer in there too. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a prayer, then sometimes I'm calming your mind before each day or for each day, because a calm mama is going to do much better with a special needs child in homeschool, and especially if you're homeschooling multiple children, I'm not really going to talk about that tonight, Mm -hmm. but I do know what it's like to homeschool multiple children and have them all different, um, different levels and stuff like that. So whatever I'm saying. Focus on that in September. I think we have a whole month on that in September. Oh, cool. So, yeah. (laughs) Oh, good. Coming up. Stay tuned. Coming up. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So you'll need to um, calm yourself. And then the other thing is, emotional fortitude is what I call it Mm. Uh, because there are ups and downs because you just, you know, one day is up, next day is down and it's an emotional roller coaster and you really can't, even though we do, you really can't live like that long term. Mm -hmm. It's just not healthy. And so you can kind of prepare yourself for some of that ahead of time by the planning and the prayer, but also Mm -hmm. just knowing that it's going to happen. And I just heard about something. I was listening to a summit this week. And it's called Tiny Habits. And there's a book about it. And there's a whole website and all this stuff. But it's basically about having a reward system. So when you want to change your habits, you have a trigger and then you make your little tiny habit and then you reward yourself. So what I'm pulling out of that for emotional fortitude is the self-reward system. And sometimes it's just like saying, I did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> I just taught my child something or, you know, you, we, always, <laughs> we do it naturally with our special needs kids. Like, hey, you did this. Right. Yeah. You can, um, I know it sounds goofy and it's hard to do, mm-hmm. but just, and I, so I've done it. I just heard about this a couple of days ago and I've been doing it in the morning. So the example they gave in the conference was, you know, you hit your feet, hit the floor and that's your trigger because your feet hit the floor every morning to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. And then you say, this is going to be a great day. <laughs> and it just kind of changes your attitude. So mm-hmm. if you can think of little tiny habits like that, that you want to add into your homeschool to give you that emotional stability that you will need homeschooling a special needs child, I would recommend that. So all of those are kind of the the parts of organizing yourself. Have a plan, pray, 
and prepare yourself emotionally. Those are all great. That um, yeah, <laughs> you definitely you need those those reset moments almost just um, mm-hmm. to because if you allow the ups and downs that travel through your life to control you, it's it is like a, it's a roller coaster. So it's like those little checkpoints. That's great. I love that. And yes, pray a lot. It's <laughs> God knows more about your child than you do. <laughs> so so. Um, so, you know, the next question is the stuff, <laughs> you know, we, stuff. we, we gather a lot of things in our homes to homeschool, but how do you suggest going about organizing all of those things when we got regular living stuff around us as well? <laughs> well, there, there are two ways to organize, um, One is you can be super organized where you know exactly where every item is, everything is labeled and everything's beautiful and it it looks good. (laughs) And then there's where you're generally organized and you generally know where your things are. Mm. So I'm going to tell a little story. So my husband is the first type. He is the organized and when, um, and I'm the second type. So when we got married, it, we started, so he, he managed all the finances because he had, uh, he had actually been in debt. Um, in his 20s and then someone taught him how to manage his money and he got out of debt so he saved every receipt and he put them all in date order and all this stuff that was actually Mm -hmm. for all for all you people praying for your uh, children for spouses one of the things I prayed for for my spouse was someone who could manage money well and I just gave that whole area over to God as a single in my own life Mm -hmm. and he provided a man who we have never had and, you know, arguments about that. We've had differences of opinion, but we haven't arguments. It hasn't been right. a problem. Uh, so I've been so thankful for that. But anyway, so that meant that because he learned how to do this, he had all his receipts in date order and all this stuff. Mm. And at first, we first got married and had one kid. First of all, it took me three months to learn how to just to remember to save all my receipts. Save it. Yeah, so right. <laughs> and then he, um, and I tried to put him in date order after I would enter him. So his, so it was basically like I was the bookkeeper. So I would enter everything in the computer and he would, he was the accountant and he would reconcile the bank account and all that stuff. So I was just the bookkeeper. I just had to enter stuff, but he wanted me to put all those receipts in order and sort them by month and all that stuff. And that was <laughs> overwhelming for me. I did it until we had like our second kid. After the first kid, we only had a few receipts, but the more kids, the more receipts. Right. And it just mm-hmm. got wild. So eventually we got here. I can show you. It's actually, I'm sitting in our office. So it's right here. So my solution was just to take an envelope and shove all of our receipts in there. And it didn't matter what order they were in. And now, granted, I had to enter them. And so all we do on the front is we write the month. Mm, And so mm -hmm. it's like this envelope has February 21, January 21, and December 20. So the last three months, these are our receipts. And the, the thing that makes this organization system work is, A, it works for me because yes. I such a good could not do his system mm-hmm. where he was, you know, at such a detailed level. So this is a general system and it works because we realized over time, okay, I realized and I mentioned it to him, <laughs> <laughs> that we very rarely had to go back in our history and find a receipt. And if we did, we could look on the computer and look for the, see what date it was. And then we only had to go through maybe one or two envelopes, or if it was misfiled, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. one, you know, one on the other side. So this was a solution. So you don't have to be all that to say, you don't Mm -hmm. have to be super organized to be organized. You can be generally organized and it's enough to function well. And as homes, as, you know, parents with special needs kids, sometimes that's all you can do is function well or just mm-hmm. function. Yes, <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and that's that's one way to do it. And the other thing I'll add to that is if your child is high functioning, you kind of need to be aware of their organization preferences too. Yeah. Because that's a very good point. Just like mm-hmm. my husband impose a system on me mm-hmm. and I just couldn't get it to work. So if your child is struggling with organization, let them help you organize. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that would help. That would, and, or, and if they're like my daughter's nonverbal, she's, you know, moderate intellectual disability. So she's not going to be telling me her preferences, but I can observe how she works. She is mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. a very organized <laughs> little person well she likes to collect things and she has like 15 Mm -hmm. shopping bags and puts everything in there and oh yeah and and so when I do school I make sure that we have some kind of organization set up for her that works for her too Mm -hmm. yeah now oh um so I'll give you some general tips for organizing and this would go for your household anywhere but Mm -hmm. it also applies to school and especially to school so the first thing is put stuff close to where you use it now, with homeschool, it's likely that you're doing, you know, you may be doing reading in the family room and mm-hmm. seat work mm-hmm. at the kitchen table or the dining room table. And you may be doing something in the hammock outside or, you know, on the front porch or nature mm-hmm. walks or all these different things. Yeah. Going, or if you're a family that goes to the library a lot, <clears throat> you'll need places for all these things. And where you put these things, you can do it one of two ways. If you don't have a lot of room in your house, you can get a tub or a crate Mm -hmm. and put everything, all your supplies and stuff into one big container and tote that around from room to room. And that's perfectly fine. If you find that's not working for you, you may need to get smaller boxes, crates, baskets, pretty much Mm -hmm. anything and uh, set those in the rooms you need them, or at least in the closet close to a room that you need them. So the closer you can get it to where you use it, the more mm-hmm. easy it's going to be to stay organized. Yeah. And the other thing, that tiny habits thing really impacted me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so one of the rules on creating a new habit is with tiny habits is your tiny habit can't last more than 30 to 60 seconds. Hmm. So the putting stuff away is not going to take, unless you're doing like a big art project, but in general, just the stuff that you use, the books and papers and pens, won't take mm-hmm. you more than 30 seconds to a minute to put away. So that's a great time to tra- train your kids to put things away. Yeah. Um, homeschooling mm-hmm. is just, that's just a really good, and that's a tiny habit. Hmm. And obviously the trigger for that tiny habit is that class is over. And so you spend one minute putting everything away. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. yay, good job. Yay. You do that little reward <laughs> yes. thing. Uh, or you can say high five or, you know, with your child or whatever. Right. So Use those tiny habits to keep yourself organized once you get organized, to stay organized. Mm -hmm. The other thing you could do is use color coding by child, if you have several Mm -hmm. children, or by subject. And you can use color code labels. You can use baskets of different colors, dollar stores, cheap parts, you know, the Lots of stores now just have dollar sections or really cheap Mm -hmm. baskets and things that you can use, plastic baskets. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Get a, you know, get one in each color. Um, If you have a lot of kids, you may not be able to do, (laughs) you may have to double up on some Some child might need stripes. (laughs) That's a a great idea. (laughs) Or they can just paint their, their, their little baskets. (laughs) Oh, I see, Peggy's, Peggy's like, well, she's in there. You know she's always one of the creative ones. Somebody, or my daughter has a big vitamin thing now because she's going to a nutritionist. And I have one too after my cancer. And so her nutritionist said, well, we just paint ours. And so that was what made me think about that. I'm not really that creative, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. Yeah, I let the kids decorate their own tub or basket or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, and the other thing is you use labels that helps a lot and the labels help not only you, but also your child. And mm-hmm. if your child doesn't read yet, use pictures. When the boys were little, I had baskets for their toys. I had these Ikea shells with little baskets and some of the boys could read and some couldn't. So I would have, you know, cars and then I hand draw, doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, draw a little picture of a car on there and they could put things away. So if you help your children, stay organized by giving them visual clues, whether it's a word or a picture, that will go a long way towards helping you keep and stay organized. Yeah. Um, Those were the three main ones I had for general organizing. And with a special needs child, I think I touched on some of those things too. So for the special needs child, you want to Make sure that if they have an organ, if they've developed an organizational preference, that you work with them and not against them. I think that's 
probably if you take away nothing else from tonight, mm. when you're doing anything with your children for homeschool or otherwise, um, it's really, really helpful if you can learn to work with them instead of against them. Because I know we're always feel like we're against them. Like, oh, no, you have to learn how to do this. You have to learn how to talk. You have to learn how to walk. You have to learn yeah. you know, brush your teeth. And sometimes it's just, think of a little baby laying there. And when you're trying to dress a little baby, they just, you know, it's really hard. But if you're patient and you wait, they always like, ah, oh, stick that little hand out or, you know, one of those, yeah. a little leg out. <laughs> and if you wait, you can like nab that leg when it goes out. Yeah. And, and so you're working with the child instead of against mm. them. And so you don't get into that tension of fighting against each other. Right. Um, yeah. Well, so, but an organization that will help too. Yes. The, let's mm-hmm. see. I used to tell my boys that, are you, fi- I used to ask my boys, are you fighting with, are you playing with him or against him? Ah, that's a good <laughs> <Yeah>. question. <laughs> <laughs> that was, and the other one, so another, another freebie tonight is <laughs> I had jury duty one time and the uh, judge said to the, um, the, the guy, the prosecutor, I guess was the defense, would ask a question, the prosecutor answer, and then he didn't get the answer he wanted, so he'd ask it again, but a slightly different way. You know, mm-hmm. and our kids do that too. Yeah. And the, you know, say, objection, and the judge goes, right, boom, question has been asked and answered, overruled, mm. or whatever. And so I use that one for my kids too a lot is, you know, question has been asked and answered. I even do that with my special needs daughter. Because, you know, sometimes she gets in that little OCD asking the same thing over and over, asking for something Mm -hmm. when we're trying to do school. And she keeps asking for it. And to be honest, I don't know 100% if she really knows, realizes that. But if I say Mm -hmm. question has been asked and answered, she just looks at me and she stops asking. (laughs) So somehow that gets across to her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Either that or she just has no idea what I'm saying and doesn't know how to respond. (laughs) That's mom, shut up. <laughs> it means I'm done. <laughs> so, that's, um, so that's, I mean, I could, that, those are the main things. I don't want to overwhelm people with all the organization stuff because I kind of right. went on and on about that. But that's really it. Just organization is so personal. Hmm. But you still have to, you still have to do it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. There's just stuff and stuff has to go somewhere. And um, I, I, I think, oh. yeah, the big takeaway. Actually, actually, I have a little show and tell Okay. I can give right now. Yeah. So I'll show you some of the stuff that we use in our homeschool. So one of the things that you can use that we use is these magazine rack holders. Oh, I love those. And they're mm-hmm. great because you can put papers in here or folders or books and everything stands up on your bookshelf or wherever mm-hmm. you, if you have bookshelves to put things on, to put it away. So I really like magazine holders for all the floppy papers and things. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, like we're talking about working in pencil, this, I got this mm-hmm. at Walmart. It says, hello, sunshine on the front. Mm-hmm. And it's in yellow. The little thing is written down here and I can't really read who makes it, but I got it at Walmart. Hmm. But on the inside, it's just pages. Let's see if, let me see if I can get it up here where I can read it. Ah, there we go. There so it just has the months of the year and days oh, one through three. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, you know, a, to be honest, a traditional planner never mm-hmm. works. And so this right. way you, you end up with so many bent blank pages and then way not enough room for the stuff you want to write on the days that you actually do something. <laughs> Right. And so and this is great because it's just, and this is like that the whole, you know, it's like a hundred pages, like the 180 pages. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then you can draw pictures in it. You can do all kinds of things. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know that I would do. Someone's going to freeze it and read all my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what's all, what I wrote on that page. <laughs> so, but something like this is really good. And you can find these um, Walmart, Target. Yeah. Dollar Tree probably won't have anything this. Uh, like this online, obviously. Yeah. I've seen um, them at like Marshalls and Ross and places and like book that. Stores, they have, yeah. All those, mm-hmm. yeah, all those places you can look for these. But these are really great because there's another thing, and I just actually picked this up at Target where it has like a month at the front and it's the same thing. It's just 
the days of the month. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. With all that all the way across. So, um, and that was like in the dollar section at Target just recently. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can have is when you do little projects with your kid, because I know later on we're going to talk about the paperwork and portfolios mm -hmm. and things. But one thing that's fun to do, if you have projects, my child, even though she's in high school, we're doing like younger age projects. Mm -hmm. But with special needs, you're probably doing a lot of visual learning techniques anyway. But mm -hmm. you have a, you know, a spiral and you use a lot of these little foldable flip things. Oh, and yeah. do you know what mm -hmm. these are called? I had, I just came across the name of these type of things where, because no I'm familiar with lap books and, right. mm -hmm. well, well, these are like all the rage now and they're called, maybe it'll come to me later. And so that was what, so they're not flip books, but you can, well, there you go. Oh yeah. So, so each page, so you like glue stuff down and, and you lift the flap kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you can create, or if you do, um, so these are great for portfolios. So that's one of the ways you could stay organized for your portfolio. Uh, and I can come back to this a little bit later. Maybe over the break, I'll look up and mm -hmm. see what that is, the name of it. The other thing I have, or if you don't have a lot of space in your house, you can take a tub like this. And these are just yes. the green uh, folders that mm -hmm. slide on the edges right. and then put a subject in each one. So that's another way if you don't have a lot of space. And these actually have a lid with a carrying case. I don't have yes. my lid with me. But this is something really, really good. And plus, it's a way to keep your paper organized, too. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I carry around. So for what I do right now, that's kind of like my storage paper. Mm -hmm. I carry this around. I got this for like a buck at Dollar Tree or something like that. And inside of it, it has the mama hair thing. Yeah, <laughs> you need that. <laughs> so when I need to Tension relax, release. I just these okay, feel good. It, these, are, these are a dollar too, so I don't know. There you go, see it up close and personal. Mm -hmm. These are really great hair massagers. You can put things like a uh, fidget. This is like one of those uh, yeah. squeezy balls mm -hmm. that you can use. You have it all together. We have our math manip manipulatives. And earlier we were talking about um, giving our kids praise and mm -hmm. giving the, you know, the thumbs up and stuff like that. I got these a long time ago at Costco, but they are um, me, oh, just like little easy. stamps. It says great work. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. It says there. great work. And it was, it came in a whole tray of them. And my daughter and even the boys love this. Just mm -hmm. getting a little stamp on their paper that says, Good yeah. job. Once they say like terrific, you did it. Great work. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Stickers are good, but stickers that actually communicate appreciation with words oh, yes. is a, it, some reason, you know, the, just having a sticker with a smiley face was not the same uh, as having no. these words. Mm -mm. That did. Great yeah, job. It's an affirmation. It. It's yeah, you need that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I recommend like that. And then we have our speech cards mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what oh and then the last thing and, and then we have you know glue scissors all the stuff we need so any any little yeah supplies. so you're not like digging through drawers trying to find it when you need it <laughs> yeah and although, although I will show you what I have with the boyfriend and then these are our bingo the little magnetic thing and this is a huh. bonus item because it has a little magnetic um I don't know if people, people don't play bingo. They may not recognize these, but they're little plastic chips, but they have a strip of metal around the outside. And this is a magnet and you just scoop it across the uh -huh. card to pick up all the little chips. Uh -huh. And the bonus is when you need to keep your kid entertained while you forgot to do something or you're trying uh -huh. to figure something out, you can give them things out of your basket to play with. Uh -huh. So that's a big thing. So those are some of the organizational things that we use in our homeschool now. Awesome. And um, is I don't know. I know we're coming up on a break time real soon. Yeah, we're coming up on a break. Um, I just want to thank Mandy. Mandy, you said you, you shared um, our broadcast with the group. Thank you for doing that. Oh, and she has a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the question. So give you time over the break to think about it. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll answer Mandy's question as we get started. But um, her question is, um, how do you organize your personal library for weekly reading, references, et cetera? So, um, so we will um, hear Stephanie's answer to that question when we come back. But I'm going to let you take a break off camera, Stephanie. And okay. we are going to hear from our sponsor, um, Knotgrass History. So let me... 
pull this up here and see what they have to say to you. So um, Snodgrass History is one of Sped Homeschool's partners, and um, we just um, thank them for sponsoring this episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Um, Snodgrass History wants you to know that they help families like yours succeed at homeschooling. Students enjoy learning and parents feel confident teaching. Snodgrass History curriculum uses narrative lessons, primary source documents, historical novels, and biographies and hands-on activities to create engaging learning experiences for children of all ages and abilities. Your family can study U.S. history, world history, geography, government, civics, and economics. Notgrass History helps history learners become history makers. Um, and so definitely visit them at um, notgrasshistory.com. And I forgot to put that up while we were going. I brought up their their little logo. Um, Learn history, make history is is um, their tagline. So so definitely check them out if you're looking for a history program where you just maybe want a, a change in, in uh, what you use um, for next year or um, maybe you don't use anything at all and you've been waiting for something to come along. Maybe that's it. So um, definitely visit notgrasshistory.com or notgrass.com to check out Notgrass History. So um, I'm going to bring Stephanie back and um, we're going to get to Mandy's question. And um, definitely if you are um, watching and joining us, um, feel free to put your questions and comments in the stream as well. And we'll incorporate that, those two. So, so welcome back, Stephanie. Hi. <laughs> and um, so, so our question from, from Mandy before we um, took our short break was, um, how do you organize your personal library for weekly reading, references, etc.? I'm assuming she's meaning all those books that you're going to need in the week. <laughs> oh, okay. And so I have, um, let me show you, I, I took some pictures on my phone. <laughs> okay. Yes, They're going to be yes. a little bit hard to see, but I will show you. I just walked around the house and took photographs. I mentioned at the beginning that for 10 years, I didn't really do anything. So that means I still have all the stuff from homeschooling my boys, a lot of it. I mean, I tried to take, I tried to sell a lot of the books and stuff at the mm -hmm. state homeschool conference, but now with COVID, I missed the last year, the last two mm -hmm. years, I couldn't do it. So let me show you some pictures of things uh, that will lead into the answer to your question, Mandy. Um, let me start back here. So this is an example. I don't know. Wait, I have to get it right. Lined there up. You so there's, mm -hmm. you see the globe. And then yep. there is kind of what we have now set up for my daughter. And you can see there is a basket with more stuff in it. And you see mm -hmm. it there. And then uh, some books. And there's her listening program therapy stuff. So I just have some stuff set up on a book a bookshelf like that mm -hmm. and I just organize it if it's something that's coming down the road I won't necessarily have it on the shelf that's right where I organize all the school stuff so I have this is right. the area where I organize all of our school stuff so mm -hmm. I have that little purple basket down there I have all that stuff on the shelf and then when it's time for school one thing you can do is if you only have a few books uh, per child you can put their books in one of these and then you right. just grab it and go because they also come in a two inch. Uh, this is a two inch. They also come in a four inch variety. Oh, okay. And so I've if you those. have the four inch variety, you mm -hmm. can put all their textbooks in one. Hmm. The other thing that I did uh, was when I would make assignments, I had a folder. Let me see if it's in here. Um, no, <laughs> this one's empty. But just a folder like this. Right. And I would put their assignments in here. And when they were old enough to do it themselves, I would give it to them and they kind of managed their day. Okay. If you um, are having problems keeping up with your child, there's other another system I really, really like developed specifically for special needs kids, and it's the Workbox system by Sue Patrick. Mm -hmm. If you've never heard of that, just uh, search on Sue Patrick Workbox system. She had a son who was autistic, and she it took her years to fine-tune this program and stuff, mm -hmm. but... I actually have that set up too, but it's, it's in another room. I don't have a picture of that, mm -hmm. uh, but it's where you use basically shoe boxes, you know, the little plastic shoe boxes on a rack and you number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think 12 fit on there. And then it helps your child, you and your child organize and you put 
uh, the first subject that you want to do in the first basket and the mm -hmm. second thing and you put numbers instead of words I guess you could put words but that way the child knows to go through the numbers mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. if they fixate on things like my daughter does sometimes <laughs> that way they know to fixate on the numbers not mm -hmm. the subject so mm -hmm. like if you just can't get to math that day or you can't get to art that day right if there's if there's not a word on the work box mm -hmm. that if it's just a number then they just know that when they get to the yeah, end of the numbers they're done yep. and that way you're not promising <laughs> right. accidentally promising things that you can't deliver on certain days mm -hmm. so that's another way to organize yeah we um, have um a, a blog written by our um our teaching manager on on sped homeschool on work boxes so you can just search work boxes on our website and you'll find that it's a short article oh, good. but um yeah that's what she uses for her daughter and so she has pictures on there of what she's used so good and then here's another picture this is my in the basement these were my all my books from when i was teaching the boys so this mm -hmm. is the ikea bookshelves and so these are down in the basement so when we finish one type of book because we de we're developmentally delayed. We're not, you know, we can fly through some books and others it mm -hmm. takes forever. So I just keep swapping them out. So I just have one small area for the books I'm actually using right now. And if they're reference books that I'm using now, but if they're reference books I'm going to use later or another time, I don't mind storing them in a different place. It goes back yeah. to the thing we talked about in the beginning, which is mm -hmm. put it where you're going to use it. And if it's a reference right. book and you're not really using it yet, you can store it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, because, yeah, you need what's most important accessible. <laughs> so, so yeah, Mandy had um, responded. She said, yes, yes, a fixation is a big thing in my home. So, um, so yes, those those numbers may work but good for you, <laughs> too. <laughs> and here's another thing that you can get. I'll just show you a couple more things that we have. This is, I use this a lot when the boys were there. It's kind of a combination homeschool but these are two sets of shelves, uh, not shelves. These are drawers. Oh, those are drawers, these yeah. Tall those towers of drawers, ones. and some of them are, mm -hmm. are short and some are bigger. Yep. And so we had, and I actually labeled them, so that was important. You want to, when you have something this intricate, you want to label these. And so there's like scissors, tape, um, gift wrapping stuff. So it was more than just school. But mm -hmm. this made it so convenient. This sat in the dining room. It's still oh, in the dining okay. room. Okay, yeah. It's in the dining room, and that's where we would, because uh, we did school in the dining room mostly when I had the boys. And with yeah. my daughter, we do it in the kitchen, and so it's a different setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, those are great. That's a lot of really good practical advice and um, things that um, parents can, can use right away. So, so you know, I know lots of homeschool moms talk about schedules and wonder what's the right schedule for teaching their child. Um, do you have anything to share with us on that? I do. And this is where I may differ from people because I don't, I'm not, uh, if you haven't guessed yet from everything I've said, I'm not one of those real scheduled people. Mm -hmm. What I learned to do, especially with my special needs child and my son who was a struggling learner, he could not go for long periods of time mm -hmm. doing the mm -hmm. same subject. Let me give you an example of him because he had like mild, very, very mild disabilities. But he would have problems like when we did spelling, if I gave him a test of 20 spelling words, happened every time, he would get the first five right, he would get the next seven wrong, mm -hmm. and then his brain would kick back in and he would get the next five right. Yep. And on a larger scale, that happened in classes. So when you're scheduling, you kind of have to know how long your child can attend to the particular subject. Other subjects were different. We could do history forever. All my, all my boys loved history for some reason. Mm -hmm. And um, even, you know, and, and, and I'm talking, well, that was like younger when he was in high school. You know, we could sit there for an hour and do a class. So the scheduling depends, really depends on your child. So what's, mm -hmm. what was easiest, what's been easiest for me to do with my daughter, who has very short spans, is I will block out an hour and a half for morning school, followed by an hour and a half break followed by <laughs> another hour and a half of school. And right. in the morning block, we do 
and sometimes we'll do more school, sometimes less, you know, sometimes we'll do a big project or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, so, and I have the timer set on my phone so that oh, forces a, me yeah. to stop what mm -hmm. I'm doing because right. she knows that sound. We have a special sound called Twinkle because mm -hmm. she loves Twinkle, Twinkle, mm -hmm. Little Star. And she knows that sound. And when she hears that sound, she knows it's school. So it forces me to stop what I'm doing and go do school. So that's number one is, again, organizing yourself by using mm -hmm. tools like that. And we do our language arts. We do, uh, we do that for a long time. We do work on her iPad, which is speech therapy. Mm -hmm. But it's also language arts because she's learning how to, you know, add S for plural nouns and things like that. Oh, so yeah. it's a combination. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's like therapy, it's language arts, and we do science. Hmm. So that's the morning. And then we have a break. And the break is because I'm babysitting my grandson and or I have stuff to do. I have to check email or run errands mm -hmm. or do stuff for the household. And then the afternoon we have another session. And again, the timer set, it starts and we know that's when this when we start. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we do we're not really doing history right now but I hope to add it in eventually. Um, she's just not there yet. Right. Um, yep. We do, we read the Bible. So that's kind of our history. Mm -hmm. like creation. Yep, that is history. <laughs> so we do Bible and we do math because she cannot do language arts and math in the same city. Right. That, they're both very taxing subjects. So, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. for her, it, she's kind of different in the sense that most kids are fresh in the morning mm -hmm. and the longer the day goes on, they get right. tired. Uh -huh. She has some brain stuff going on to where the more she moves around during the day, the more organized her brain is and the better she does. So she is kind of the opposite of most kids. So that's why we have math in the afternoon and Bible. Yeah. Well, so that goes that's along so much with what you were talking about is, you know, go with them and, and, how your, your child is organized. And um, that, that has to do with their peak times for learning too. Yeah. Cause everything you, everything you read says, you know, do the hard stuff in the morning. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, I can't cause you can't cause in same with speech or speech production was always better in the afternoon. So we had to do speech therapy later in the day. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's how I do it uh, mm -hmm. with her. And again, with the younger kids, if, if you have a child who's higher functioning and has a lot more courses during the day and spends a lot more time in school, then I recommend kind of getting a feel for how long they can last in a particular subject yeah. and schedule it and then schedule downtime. I actually have a mm -hmm. book on my website. Um, let me, oh, I, yeah. I just print it off. This is, this is low tech night. Okay. <laughs> this is low tech night with Peggy and Stephanie. <laughs> So this is the, the, my website, and there are two, right at the top, there are two um, books you can get for free. This one here with the apple on the front is called How to Teach Your Special Needs Child at Home. And in there, it's called Crash Course, and it is truly a crash course. <laughs> it talks a little bit about organizing all your stuff, and it talks about the different crates and putting them in different mm -hmm. places. It talks about a schedule. It gives you eight printables in that book that will help you. Um, awesome. figure out a couple of different ways to do scheduling mm -hmm. and some goals, worksheets and things like that. Yeah. So there, so, there are different ways to do it, but that's, it just, it really depends on your kid. But I yeah. personally prefer the blocks where you do blocks of times. Okay. I'm going to do these subjects in this hour mm -hmm. and a half. Mm -hmm. And if there is a meltdown in the middle of the hour, hour and a half, my tip in the book is you in the class, not your child. <laughs> <laughs> where, you know, they have to do one more thing, whether it's put one more mm -hmm. dot on the page or, you know, tiny, tiny, but where right. they, what well, you're ending the class, not them. Mm -hmm. But that way, if you have an hour and a half scheduled for these classes and one of them falls apart or they all fall apart, it's, you know, it's contained. And then you can pick yeah. up again in the afternoon and yep. do another block mm -hmm. uh, like we did today. Right. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you're listening and you can't see the screen and see where Stephanie's um, uh, website is, it's artofspecialneedsparenting.com. So I'll just put all that together. That's A-R-T um, of specialneedsparenting.com. So, and I will include that on the YouTube um, description as well so that oh, thank you can. Oh, and the other resource that's up there, if you are transitioning uh, from public school or you're thinking about transitioning from public school to homeschooling, 
The other book I have there well, is called Transition Your Special Needs Child from IEP to Homeschool. And this goes awesome. in detail over all the legal steps you have to do because education is legally required in the United States when kids are school age. So every state has an attendance requirement for when you're ages, sometimes it's five, times like six till 18. Yep. And this book, this ebook is just, you know, these, both of these books are really short. They're just a few pages and it explains why you have to fill out the paperwork that you do. Each state is different. It tells you where to go in your state to find information and all that stuff. So awesome. if you're thinking about it, um, if you're thinking about it, you decide not to. My website's all about special needs parenting, not just homeschooling. So, uh, so you know, you'll get other stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for letting our audience know about those resources. Those are great. Um, we had one comment from, from our, one of our YouTube um, viewers that she said, we have rolling carts from IKEA. So I think IKEA has a lot of things that <laughs> organization oh, yeah. things. And, and like you said earlier, those, the rollers, if you can't, put it all in separate rooms, at least be able to cart it quickly between those, the spaces. Oh, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, so now, yes, the dreaded paperwork. <laughs> um, or do you want to talk about, um, scheduling? I guess we did just talk about scheduling our, your kids and, um, as well as. Yeah. That, I kind of, Kind of that kind of fell of in earlier. So, and since we're um, we're coming close on time, let's 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 dive into um, paperwork and um, reporting, recording, all those things, um, and touch on those a little bit. Okay. So, if you're working with a special needs child, um, you have special requirements for your child, either informal or formal. Mm. In some states, you're required to show proof of progress. And that can be done in a variety of ways. And one of them is um, with testing. Mm -hmm. And if you have a special needs child who's mild, you might be able to do the standardized testing and just have some accommodations. Now, right. just a word on if you use accommodations in testing, you usually need to notify the testing company because these mm -hmm. tests are what's called normed. That right. means taken under normal circumstances. So mm -hmm. if your child is not taking a test under normal circumstances, yeah. they just don't include those results mm -hmm. with everybody. So they're not normed because it's not a normal situation. Right. And accommodations are things like um, untimed, using a scribe. Um, those are the two main ones that we use using a calculator, having the test read to you. There are yes. different, mm -hmm. different accommodations you can give on testing. Yeah. So if your child's not high enough functioning to do that, you might be doing something like a portfolio, which is a collection of things that have samples of work throughout the year that show that your child is progressing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, with a really young kid or someone with fine motor problems, you can show the progression of coloring within the lines. Mm -hmm. Or you can show... Um, writing skills and yeah that's a whole nother yes <laughs> how, how to do all this stuff is a whole nother thing and actually I have um and to keep track of yourself you might the your stuff like that you might want to put together and I encourage you to what's called a student education plan yeah. and we spent that all phrase, last month talking about those so yes lots of lots of resources on that oh I'm sorry you talked about it when Last month, that was our, our main theme. All oh, that's month. right. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the student education plan, if you have one, um, it helps you keep track of these things and then you kind of know what you're doing. If you don't mind, I will share um, a sheet that I have, a yeah, goal sheet. Please do. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a goals worksheet that I created. And if you are interested in having it, just let me know. I've given it out to my list a few times and it's part of a course that I created for an SCP. Um, but what I did was you start with your goal. So you put your goal at the top up okay. here mm -hmm. and then at the bottom you have your present level. That means this is where your child is functioning right now. Mm 
Yeah. And then you can make notes on what curriculum you're using, any accommodations mm -hmm. you're given for the goal. And then I have it divided into, you know, each 10 percentage. So mm -hmm. you can write out what it looks like. So if my That's child great. is trying to color mm -hmm. within the lines, mm -hmm. when will it be considered 30 percent better, 50 percent better or 100 mm -hmm. percent mm -hmm. or 30 percent accomplished 50 or writing skills or speech or whatever? Whatever. And that way your child and I wouldn't expect anyone to fill out every 10 percentage. It may be you may want to do 25, 50 and 75 and 100. Mm -hmm. And your child may not ever get to 100 or at least 100 percent for the next you know three years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so but if you can get them to 50 percent. Right. Well, you're showing progress. That's what's most important. You're showing progress. So even if you mess this up and fill it out wrong, like you're too ambitious, <laughs> and if you, you know, have a really low goal and you meet it, then you can, mm -hmm. um, you can show that. So you can use a goal sheet like this, and then you know what right. samples, you know when to save your samples. So mm -hmm. a simple goal sheet will oh, help yeah. you uh, do something like that. So if anyone would like to uh, would like that, just let me know. You can email me. There's a contact form on my website and I will send it to you. Awesome. Yep. So um, if you're listening to the podcast, you definitely have to see that that form. That's pretty um, slick and, and easy to use, it looks like. And, and and especially if you live in a state where you do have to, to prove that, that progress, that's an extremely helpful thing because then you can just include samples of work and write in that. And that's really all you need to do. So that's awesome. Yeah, you have your goal and then you have your samples. Mm -hmm. yep. And I live in one of those states. <laughs> so so I need one of those. And um, so that's one of the ways that you can keep track of that paperwork. And then, again, I would just use something like this, just a simple carrying file box yeah. or if you have a uh -huh. filing system that you already use. And I have samples. What I'm doing is I have a shoebox. Okay, my boys have size 12 feet, size 13. Oh, yeah. they're, big boxes. they're big shoe boxes. So they yes. have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in them. So I wow. just have, or you can use a box from copy paper, you know, the mm -hmm. perfect size. And I throw all our schoolwork in there. And then mm -hmm. every few weeks, I will pull out samples. And so that way I have a collection oh, spot. A Again, idea. this is a general, I'm a generalist. So right. I generally collect the paper. Mm hmm and at that point, so every three or four weeks, I will go through and I will sort it by subject and then pull out the ones that I like. And that way, at the end of the year, if the evaluator says, well, you know, do you have anything else? At least it's by subject right. <laughs> and I can pull it out. So, yes. so you're, uh, that seems to work. Um, we didn't really talk about online stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you do online, then those programs usually work you through, you know, yeah. you're free. or if you're using it online, it kind of keeps you organized itself, mm -hmm. right. self-organizing. Yeah. So. And next week, we're just going to be focusing on technology for organization. Oh, so, so that's so good. all going to be covered next week. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so. so those are really the things you, then we talked about, or when I was talking about organizing yourself, mm -hmm. your planner. You can get one that's, you know, week by week, but you're going to have all these empty spaces. You're going to be erasing stuff all the time. You can do it on the computer. Just type it in. Mm -hmm. um, you can. You also want grade sheets. If you're keeping track of grades, you know, you can have little grade sheets. I have those right. two available yeah. if you're interested. And some states require attendance. So And attendance. That's... And I have all of those forms already made up. I should just package them and put them out there. Maybe I'll do yeah, that. So in a week from now, come back. Yeah. Go, if you go back, I'll have them all like a little, little package <laughs> ready to go. Awesome. Well, that'd be great. All right. Well, we um, we have wrapped or almost <laughs> filled the entire hour here. So um, that's just been getting some great information, Stephanie, and um, very practical. And I, I love your grouping method because <laughs> I think a lot of times when we look at organization it's so detailed and um, you know like you said it um, it's kind of overwhelming but you, you've made it manageable so so thank you for um, sharing your ideas um, I'm sure our audience is very appreciative I you know the comments we've we've gotten um, Mandy just said thank you so much <laughs> <You're welcome, Mandy. laughs> exclamation points <laughs> so um, 
So yeah, I appreciate all of all the wisdom that you had to share, and um, it definitely it, it came from a place of, of somebody who um, who has, like you said, your your house was disorganized, and you found a system that worked. And I I think that's what's most important is we need things that work in our homes and and work around our kids and our schedules and all of that. So, so that's awesome. But um, hey, thank I. You. Yeah, you are welcome. And it's, yeah, nice having you back again. And I want to thank also Knotgrass History for um, sponsoring this episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. And um, you can check them out at knotgrass.com. And next week, just as I was telling Stephanie a couple minutes ago, is we are going to still be talking about organizing and planning. Um, but we're going to talk about using technology to organize your homeschool. So um, Meryl Vandermeer from Funda Funda Academy is going to be joining us and she is all about tech and loves tech. So she's going to just um, help us to find all those those things that, like Stephanie was talking about, those alarms that we need to remind us of things and <laughs> those, those places we can write things down and then quick backspace and erase them and um, fill them in again, So, <laughs> which we need a lot of. So, um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, join us here again um, next week. Uh, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central at um, whichever, I guess, place you're, you're listening to us or watching us, um, Facebook, YouTube, or um, Periscope, or if you listen to our recorded. Um, but we'll see you then. Um, thanks again, Stephanie. It was a pleasure. Yeah. So you're much welcome. information. It's a pleasure. And, and definitely check out Stephanie's website, um, artofspecialneedsparenting.com, and, um, and see all the things that she has and is continuing to add. <laughs> So, <laughs> all right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you right here um, next week for another episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Bye, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> this is Chris Christensen. And back in 2006, I started a simple project, a project to try and introduce more people to the Bible through Bible study called the Bible Study Podcast. It's a simple name and a simple idea. Each week, every week, we study one chapter of the Bible, talk about what it says, and what that might mean for us today. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search for the Bible Study Podcast on your favorite podcast app.